Hey, what's up? I'm Steve with Cult of Mac and my time with the Galaxy S7 is coming to a close. I spent a full week with this using it as my daily driver, so today I am going to share with you what I like and dislike about the Galaxy S7 and Android. So let's get started. Before I get into my likes and dislikes, I want to point out I have never had any extended use with Android. The most experience I've ever had is with the odd tablets here and there and friends' phones. I've always actively tried to avoid Android and I always seem to be fanboying out for iOS whenever there's an iOS versus Android debate. But the truth is I've never given it the chance, nor the other handsets that Apple's competitors seem to churn out. I put my iPhone 6 Plus to the side for a week and use the S7 exclusively as my personal phone. So let's start with the hardware. In terms of design, it's okay. A lot of people out there love it and I can see why. It's clean, simple, but a bit boring for me. It looks like a slab of glass and metal with a little bump on the front and back. Nothing about it stands out, apart from that super shiny gold finish. Yes, it looks nice in the box, but as soon as it's opened, it's just a fingerprint magnet. I've never known anything like it. The build quality of the S7 is impressive, and I love the fact it's got that IP68 water resistant rating. Don't get me wrong, I'm really careful with my phones, but having a two year old running about means I'm bound to have accidents. Filming the waterproof test last week for the S7 felt really wrong, every fiber of me telling me not to do it. Basically being too scared to risk $860 worth of foam. But I was really impressed with it when I finally did give it a go. The S7's battery life is my favorite thing about the whole phone. It just keeps on going. Usually my iPhone 6 Plus will get me pretty much through an entire day with about 20% battery life left by say 7 p.m. The S7 however will get me through an entire day and when I check the battery at 8, 9 o'clock I still have 50% or more. I've actually had an entire two days from a single charge. Every review you read says much the same about the S7's display, which is fair enough. It's a really great display. I'm a big fan of AMOLED displays with each pixel being individually lit. They're far superior in terms of brightness, contrast and colour to most, if not all, LCD displays. But I think Samsung has gone a little bit too far with saturation and contrast. Videos I've worked on using displays that are specifically made for colour grading look crushed and oversaturated when watching on the S7. Yes, there are other modes you can choose within the software to change the settings of the screen, but all of them seem to have some sort of coloured tint or just gone too far. Plus, the viewing angles aren't the best if you're not holding it straight on. And the camera is great too. It's by far the fastest focusing camera on any phone. And it's one of, if not the best smartphone camera on the market right now. But I think the screen does a lot to help the photos out. When I reviewed the S7's pictures versus the successes on my MacBook's Retina screen, there's not a huge difference in terms of quality or color. But the S7 definitely has a nice depth of field and is quicker to autofocus. I also hate the touch buttons on the bottom. I know it's more of an Android fault than Samsung's, but it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's much easier swiping left and right between pages and apps, something I've repeatedly found myself trying to do. And I would press them by accident when just trying to scroll through Facebook, which then made me paranoid when using the phone, being careful as to where my fingers and hand were placed. On top of that, I found that the screen isn't as responsive as on my iPhone. I'd find myself repeatedly tapping and scrolling again and again, then accidentally pressing one of the touch buttons and losing the page I was on. Plus, surely the back button should be on the left hand side? When it comes to Android, there's a few things I like and a few things I really don't. Let's get the negatives out the way. Firstly, why so many pre-installed apps? And two versions of them. When booting the S7 for the first time, I already had two browsers, email, video, music and photo apps. I know this is because of Samsung's TouchWiz working on top of Android, but it just makes no sense. I also find it really annoying to find and open other tabs that I have open, having to press the touch buttons at the bottom to see the other tabs and apps in the same screen. I do however like the little widgets I can add to the home screens. I like the Google search widget on there, being able to search for websites without opening up the browser. It just feels like nice integration. Although iOS does have the ability to just swipe down and search from there but there are things like the weather widgets and such that are just a nice touch. All that being said, what I really missed about my iPhone is the integration with the other Apple products. My iPhone connecting to my Apple TV or my iMac, my MacBook, it's just a really nice way to work. Also, I missed the ease of use. It may just be because I'm used to iOS, having using it and being in Apple's ecosystem for over eight years. But I've generally found Android is just less intuitive. I feel like anyone could pick up an iPhone for the first time and make their way around eventually. 
but with Android it's a bit more of a steep learning curve. Android isn't as bad as I first thought, but I definitely prefer using iOS on a daily basis and I'll be keeping my iPhones over Android. But let me know in the comments down below which operating system and phone you prefer. I'm going to take a guess which one you all prefer, but let me know in the comments down below anyway. If you enjoyed this video, please help us out and smash that like button. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single video from Cult of Mac. I'll catch you in the next one.